Hey everybody, thanks for joining me again on my YouTube channel. This is Workshop Quick Takes. Do you have an older vehicle that you wanted to spruce up the interior on a little bit? Well, we sure do. It's a 2000 Jeep Cherokee XJ, and one way we did it was getting seats from a nicer ZJ Grand Cherokee that happened to bolt right in, in the front, and went into the rear with some modifications. We haven't shown that yet, but we have previously shown some upholstery projects, notably redoing the headliner of this same Jeep and the sun visors. So we're gonna use some of the off-cut material from that and go fetch a section of whole hide leather off of eBay. You can get it off eBay, Amazon, probably your local upholstery shop has supplies. And if you just want to use a standard color that's available, maybe about seven to 12 that we've typically found, you're golden. You only need to do the first half of what we're gonna show you today. If, however, you also want to tint it to get an approximate dye match, then you'll need the second half of what we're gonna to do today. This does take a few specialized supplies, a leather dye, top coat, that kind of thing. You can get all of this off of your, again, Amazon, eBay, your local upholstery shop, whatever. And it's doable by an amateur at home. I'm not an upholstery expert. I just learn as I go, especially, and watch other people's YouTube videos to get some tips and tricks for how this stuff goes together. It's all doable by you. So come along and let's see what it took for us to do it. This here is the center console uh, cap from my 2000 Jeep Cherokee. I've removed the two screws here that hold the hinge in and then this piece just comes indoors. I'm going to start by removing the latch assembly. This is an, actually an aluminum aftermarket one that I got from, I think it was JCR Off-Road because the original plastic one was long broken. The main thing to know is once you have these two screws out and once you have this latch piece removed, there are just four more screws to completely disassemble the rest. After that, this piece here, the plastic, just pops out away from this gray backing. And I had previously done a little glue work on here, so I think it's stuck down slightly, but that's okay. If you haven't modified yours at all, then it should pop loose a little easier than this is coming off, and there we go. So you've got this piece of molded plastic over this piece of whatever it is, and of course then there's this rubberized backing on here, which has some compression to it, but not enough to just recover with some kind of upholstery. I've tried that a couple different ways, didn't like the results. So today I'm going to go for something just a little bit different. This here is a large piece of whole hide green leather that I got for our, I think it was around $90, and it's over a square meter. That should be enough to do trim pieces in the Jeep, but what I'm finding is if I try to glue anything directly onto this, it doesn't seem to want to hold very well. Maybe with the leather being a little bit more stretchy, I might have better luck, but I think what I want to do is use some of this material that I originally bought and used to reline my uh, roof headliner and my sun visors because it has a cloth that is bonded to a thin foam backing, and so that foam interface provides a little bit of necessary give between two materials with just similar stretching or compression rates. So to do that, obviously, you want to overcut initially, and this piece here is a scrap, so I don't mind wasting a bit of it. So let's try these here scissors and give that a shot, I think. Over on that end, over on this end. If I cut here, I should have more than enough to work with. So what I'm thinking is, if I can get that all the way around the edges, but maybe not wrap it, and then just let the leather wrap around the end and come inside, we might get a, a fairly good result out of this. Let's just start by giving this a good top spray with contact adhesive. And now I know exactly how much area I need to do here too. All right, now we'll just let that tack up for a minute or two and then fix those two pieces together and see what that looks like. Okay, now that everything's had a chance to tack up, what I'm gonna need to do is stretch this out slightly. So I'm gonna start from one end here, pull the foam out a little bit and roll it. Next step, that's all going to need to tack up for a while so that it bonds good and tight to the other. So one way I could do that maybe is with tape. Later, I'm gonna be cutting away all of the uh, surrounding perimeter here, so I don't mind if in pulling these together that I uh, mess up the fabric a bit. And then same thing over here on the end. I have to trim some of this back before I do the final leather, which will actually pull everything together. But in the meantime, we're going to give that an hour or so, maybe two, 
and let the contact adhesive really bind the foam against the rubber backing. And what this will then provide when we go over it again with leather is we'll pull the leather down tight, which will wrap up these uh, corners and make sure there's no weird edge here where we're gonna cut it. And then the leather will actually tuck under this plate, which is then gonna go back on there. In the meantime, however, we do want this foam sticking down pretty good because this is gonna form our permanent interface between the leather, which stretches at a different rate than the uh, rubber backing in here and allow everything just to kind of move around with temperature and you know, just resting your arm on it or whatever. A couple hours and we'll be back on this. Okay, a couple hours have passed. I need to take the tape off and I wanna pull from the outside in so that I don't rip this stuff right back off again. I've loaded this knife up with a fresh sharp blade. And so what I wanna do is lift these back up. There we go. Okay, that's not perfect, but it's a pretty good job. And actually, what I could do if I wanted to, since I'm gonna be wrapping this around with the leather anyway, is I could pull that in with tape. I think Gorilla Tape will actually be up for this. And what I can do is probably split this into half, I think. So I'm gonna start with a piece that goes roughly there. Give that a nice firm grip there, and then wrap it in. That'll help give me a nice round seam to pull the leather over. Okay, I need a piece. Be bigger because I got to wrap it all the way around, but not excessive because I don't want to waste too much. Right here looks like it might be a good spot to cut. And I can take some of this tail here and use that as a test piece when I'm going to do uh, dye tinting to get this to the right final color. So Okay, see, now that everything's tacked up, if we can get a nice clean drop right in the middle of that. Looks like we can. It's not bad. It's gonna give us some fits though, is these corners. This step is easier to describe after the fact, so let's apply a slickly edited studio narration over the footage. Now that we've applied another round of spray adhesive along the inner lip, we're just going to move down the row, pulling the leather over the lip edge as we go. Holes for the mounting screws are punched with a carpenter's scratch awl and enlarged with a Phillips screwdriver, while excess leather is trimmed off using a scissors as necessary. The long, even sides are straightforward to complete. The corners and the recess for the latch are what will give trouble yet. The important thing is to pull the leather a bit tighter there to stretch it and then do the minimal amount of gathering and folding necessary to complete the job. That leaves behind pleats, but not a giant wad. There are tricks for doing this wet in order to form the leather around irregular shapes, but we're not getting that elaborate here. As long as we pull the corners tight, the pleat marks will mostly be on the bottom side and largely invisible once the trim piece is reinstalled on the bottom. Well, that's not perfect, but it has just that right amount of give. It is covered in leather, and as much as possible, I've got it pulled pretty tight. I mean, around the front here, 
It's about as good as I'm going to do as an amateur. I'm reasonably happy with that. Around the back here, I had to make a couple tucks. Um, I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but I'm not the person to do it. This is what I'm working with. This is what I got. And then there's going to be a couple screws going through here, of course, for the hinge, which will help secure it down on the back side to make sure it doesn't pop out that way. So there is one more step I'm going to have to do, though, is this green is too bright. And so I'll need to uh, darken these. So let's take a look at what that's going to be. All right, next challenge we've got is this is the leather that I've just recovered, and this is the leather on the seat we're trying to match. As you can see, this is quite a bit darker. Probably some more blue in it, definitely more maybe dark colors like black or brown. We don't want to start on this right away, however, and that's why I've got these nice little offcuts we made. Notice that from stretching the leather and putting the glue on the back, this may have gotten just a hair lighter, but not much. So we'll work on one of these samples first and see if we can get it to color match this before we try dye this one here. Here's some of the supplies we're going to use. You can get all these online. These came from um, probably Amazon or whatever, but I've got a leather dye, a large bottle, because I'm going to need quite a bit of this color. This is an aqua green. An aqua green comes out a little bit closer to the color we want. It's a darker, has more blue in it, and then we're probably also going to need, before this is all done, maybe some brown or possibly some black. So I've got those colors in this little uh, leather repair kit here. The last thing I've then got is a leather top coat. This is kind of like a clear coat except for leather, so it remains a little bit flexible. This is necessary to seal the thing up after you have changed the dye color a bit, just to make sure it doesn't uh, wear or bleed back out somehow. Now this stuff is really nice and powerful. It will dye almost anything you can imagine, including your skin. So make sure you're wearing gloves while doing this. And also, since I don't want to dye the entire workbench green, I think I'm going to put a little backing board in there. This piece of scrap from an earlier project will work fine. So here's what happens when we just take a little bit of the uh, aqua leather dye here and just start putting it on. The longer you let it sit, the darker it's going to tint the leather. So that there should be pretty good. And now, just to see what we've done, let's take a paper towel and wipe off the excess. Just like that, we've already made it a much darker blue-green shade. And for comparison, and the more I wipe off the surface, the more I'll bring out the grain texture because I'll take more of the dye off of the top here while it's still wet, but down inside the grain, I'm not going to really be able to pull it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that to dry for a few minutes. So far, this waste of money's only been right twice today. Okay, this is dried up. That's definitely too aggressive. There's too much blue in there for starters. And also, I'm not sure if it's going to be too dark or too light, but I think what I can do is maybe temper it with a little bit of yellow so that I get a little bit lighter shade of green and less of the blue. And then if I have to darken it back up, I can do that with some more uh, black or brown. And I might add just a touch of brown anyway. Now this particular dye happens to be alcohol based, so another thing I can do as part of this is thin it down a little bit. And I don't have any proper rated thinner, but I do have some 70% isopropyl alcohol, so we'll give that a shot. We've got no reason to show you the full blending process in real time, and you've got no reason to stay if we did. Custom colors require custom mixing, and you'll need to eyeball your own blend. Do note that there are alcohol based leather dyes, like we're using and oil-based leather dyes, which we probably should have used for better color-fast properties in an automotive environment. But whichever you choose, keep in mind the two types won't mix. In fact, we found different vendors' dyes of the same solvent base still had trouble mixing. But we didn't want to spend the price of dinner for two on buying multiple four-ounce bottles of the good stuff, so we worked with what we had already got. The two big takeaways were this. Get a set of pipettes from the hobby store for measuring out the proportions. And write down each new recipe you attempt. If you don't, you will run out of that perfect mix midway through the job and never figure out how to recreate it. I finally have a color match that's pretty close to what I need. And since this is going to be in the center console, not right at the seats, I think we'll be able to get away with it. We need to turn this from in interesting shade of office chair green to that. So here goes nothing. Actually, I'm just going to use this.
It's moving in the right direction, but it's not quite uniform. So I am going to need to mix up another batch, do that again, and overcoat the top. But looking at what I'm trying to match over there, I think the color is going to come out close enough. And then once I get the clear coat on, it should be, you know, have the right look. So best we could do. Similar to working with wood finishes, multiple applications of the same color formula will serve to deepen and darken the color in the leather without further changes to the underlying tint. Additionally, the color will become more uniform across the workpiece while masking any natural variations in the material. Reapply multiple times, or don't, until you've got the color match as close as you can make it. All right, now that the dye's had some time to set up a bit, it's essential to get a clear coat on here because this will always remain alcohol uh, soluble. And so if I ever wipe this down with like a uh, wipe that contains any sort of alcohol content, then I'm going to just watch the color come right back out. Clear coat also just helps with general wear and tear. Here it is after one coat of the sealant. I'm probably going to put two. I can see a little bit of streaking in there. It's not ideal, but it's good. It went from that to that, which is not quite that, but it's close enough that up between the two seats, where it's kind of dark in the center anyway, won't be seen. I'm pretty happy with that for now. We'll see how well it wears, and hey, if it fails and dies, I can always just peel this back off and put on something else. Well, I ended up doing another thin coat of uh, dye, which helped even out the color a little bit more and then a very heavy coat of the uh, topical clear coat. So what I'm gonna do to try and finalize this is take some of this Kiwi brand, what is it? Conditioning oil. I've used this before on boots and jackets and things. And let's just apply a little down here, make sure it's not going to start lifting. Uh, no, looks good. Yeah, I'm gonna apply con uh, conditioning oil over this whole thing and then just let it bake in the sun for a couple hours to try and help seal everything in because oil not sure exactly what's in this, but probably a combination of uh, like lanolin and wax and yeah. Doesn't need to be applied super thick either. Just want to get enough on there that it'll bake down into the leather. Okay, hopefully that melts in and helps seal up the dye a bit. So, I'm gonna put that outside in the sun for a couple hours and see what happens. Oh, well, there it is with the oil freshly applied and the excess wiped off. Seems to be fairly waterproof. I was able to clean it with a wipe without getting a, any result on the, no dye leaching or whatever. So it feels good. Off camera, we went and fabricated this little spring assembly. We selected one from a handful of different sizes purchased at the local Ace Hardware, trimmed it down, and made a mounting plate to hold it. The spring provides just the right amount of tension to make the aluminum replacement latch function like the original. It's the little things. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again today. Hopefully you found that helpful, inspirational, interesting. Maybe you've got a project you want to start now. Go for it. There are some specialty supplies. There's a bit of money you have to put into it in order to get this to come out. But at the end of the day, most of the investment is your time. So we'll see you again next time, whenever that is. Has anyone seen my phone?